Social media has become a part of our culture that's impossible to ignore, profoundly impacting the way people communicate. Social media sites act as a constantly updating, abundant source of information that many people now utilize as a way to get their news. This has had a massive impact on the field of journalism, completely changing the way news is delivered and consumed. You hear often people say, oh, journalism is dead, but that's absolutely not true. And social media is, I believe, the reason why journalism has been changing. It's evolving, it's not dead. I think social media platforms like Twitter I wouldn't necessarily say they're hurting journalists. I think they are, are, they are um, leading to an evolution in journalism. And think about how we're also consuming news a little bit differently. Um, I'm fascinated by Snapchat. The fact that CNN and BuzzFeed and the Daily Mail are showing news in a different way, engaging for the millennial minds that you know want a quick hit and then want to go on. We're seeing that young people are using the tools that are available to them to affect change, effectuate change uh, through direct action as well as social interaction. I mean, I've always been fascinated, I guess, with how social media plays in the journalism world because it really has changed um, the face of what it is. We're exposing news in different ways um, to consumers that may not have seen it. Think about how we've drawn so many people into the political um, debates. I would credit the social media smack talk for a lot of that. I think the younger um, generation, particularly college students and um, students in their in their early 20s, folks in their 20s in general, um, I think they tend to rely more on social media. And so everything is going online and how are people reading their stories via Facebook, Twitter, that's how most millennials um, receive their news. Um, I get my news mostly online. Um, I usually get my news from social media apps such as Twitter and Facebook. I typically just like see articles on Facebook. Uh, the internet. Honestly, I do use Facebook a lot with the trending topics. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. When I'm on Twitter, there's like the little news thing. Pretty much online. I mostly hear it from people on Facebook or Twitter first. Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, places like that. Especially among younger generations, many will report that they get their news first from Twitter. The combination of the site being live, constantly updating, and restricting users to 140 characters in their posts makes all the information easily accessible and abundantly available. There are some downsides to this. To some extent, it's a positive because you would think that they're being exposed to more content and more variety of content in terms of news from not just their local region but all over the place. Um, but on the flip side is that the depth when it comes to um, what you can get just by viewing social media, you know, tweets or whatnot to get your news, that's a downside. The main principle of truth that we have in our ethical considerations as journalists cannot be verified. And therefore, the contribution of social media is almost counterproductive. It tends to give a voice to people that uh, might not be experts in certain fields. Uh, they are able to comment immediately on a, a, some type of post with information that isn't true, isn't, uh, isn't accurate. The lines between blogger and journalist are blurring, and I would say there's probably some resentment from traditional journalists on that if they haven't been able to cross that line. I'm concerned with the way it is being used, used in the way that we may not be able to verify the basic principles of journalism, principles such as um, 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 uh, truth, principles such as um, uh, detachment from, from, from events. I think for folks uh, solely relying on social media for news, uh, there's definitely a downside because um, you are only getting kind of quick bursts of information. I would say also that social media has brought a greater level of scrutiny with law enforcement as well. And I don't know that that's a bad thing. I think that we need to have transparency. And um, I think we're already seeing changes with body cameras and some of the dialogues that are happening. Long way to go, but social media was how this was distributed. Twitter was founded in March of 2006, and since its creation, it has attracted more than 500 million users. 
The site began as a microblogging platform for users to follow and keep up with friends in 140 character posts. The definition of Twitter is a short burst of inconsequential information and a series of chirps from birds. Little did anyone know that these inconsequential chirps would turn into sources for breaking news and major events happening around the globe. What's interesting about Twitter right now is having an existential crisis. You know, they brought back Jack Dorsey um, to lead their, their company. And are they a news conversation tool? Um, are they just kind of a short message tool? They're not quite sure. What's interesting is when something really breaks in the news, Twitter's the place to be. Yes, I think that Twitter is probably the best form of disseminating news specifically because you're giving or you're gathering information um, in the shortest amount of characters possible. There's a lot less context uh, in social media. Uh, one tweet doesn't tell the story. When Michael Jackson died, um, the news on that came out much faster than it was out on CNN. I learned about the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound from Twitter before, 20 minutes before I saw it on the news. When Whitney Houston died, same type of thing, but when you have um, more serious issues like the Boston bombing, you would have people on Twitter, you'd have the reporters on the ground who were actually reporting what they saw. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't consider someone who goes down to Ferguson, who's a part of this tweeting, necessarily a journalist, but they're a source of information. Twitter has become a platform for citizens to both voice their opinions and report information on issues occurring close to their home and close to their heart. Citizen journalists can provide real-time updates on events that the mainstream media might not be able to get for themselves. Twitter is where you talk and I believe Facebook is where you share. So Twitter, you can actually be live. Facebook is more of a way to take the information that you've gathered and share it as a whole package. Twitter, you can have tidbits of information that people will follow. I personally like Facebook the best. I think it gives you a lot more room to tell the story and to be creative um, because you don't have a character limit, so you can write as much as you need. You can put links, you can put videos, you can put photos, and it's all pretty easy to do. And think about our political campaigns. Today, I mean, Trump and, and Bush talk smack about each other on Twitter. They're not necessarily doing it in TV ads. Um, it, it really has changed the conversation. It's made it more real time. And I mean, a, a lot of this conversation is playing out in 140 characters. If you told me 10 years ago that's how we would be picking our president, I would have thought you were smoking something. The real-time and practical use of Twitter has served as an emergency communication system for breaking news. Features on the site such as trending topics and hashtags, essentially a word, phrase, or topic that is mentioned at a greater rate than others, allows Twitter and its users to generate and contribute to conversations happening around the world. I think the hashtags play a role in terms of um, generating a conversation around a specific topic or event. Hashtags are really great way for people to, for people in a particular movement to combine their efforts um, and see what other people are talking about and learn more about what's going on. We interviewed the creator of the hashtag, If They Gunned Me Down, a hashtag created to start a conversation about the portrayal of men of color in the media after the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. We should be talking about the fact that this man Wore his, that this young young man wore his pants a certain type of way. We should be talking about the fact that this young man should not be dead in the first. He shouldn't be laying on the ground. Was the, the ultimate question. And so I began to ask. I, I took two pictures of myself and I asked the question: If they gun me down, um, how would the media portray me? Twitter has been used to organize protests and advance social movements, sometimes referred to as Twitter revolutions. The Hill, a top U.S. political website, described Twitter and other social media as a strategic weapon which has the apparent ability to realign social order in real time with little or no advance warning. Literally, I, I put the tweet out and then within like a matter of minutes, it just started getting retweeted. Like my phone kept going off until the point that my phone actually died because there were so many retweets. Uh, when, I, when I turned it back on, it was like, and like hundreds of tweets, hundreds of retweets, and other people have started, you know, doing their own 
And so I contacted some of my friends. I'm like, uh, hey, you guys, I think something just happened. I didn't know how to explain it other than say, I think something major just happened and I didn't realize what I was doing um, when I did it other than try to make a statement. That it became like that I started seeing it in the trending section uh, within hours of it going out was like, wow. And then in the worldwide trending section, that's, my mind was blown at that point. I'm not convinced on the hashtag thing. Um, we haven't brought the girls back. Black lives do matter, but nothing's changed yet. Um, you need to physically do something. Having hashtags, it's a really great, great way of grouping all these individuals with the same beliefs. But there's also a new thing like slacktivism, that sort of thing where people feel that they can share their or express their opinions on Facebook and Twitter and that's all they have to do. The marriage of social media and journalism has brought about significant changes to the world of news, both positive and negative depending on your perspective. As social media evolves, the way news is delivered and consumed evolves as well. It's a game of give and take in this relationship, so where is the line drawn? This is what we found out. There are a whole host of ethical dilemmas um, with journalists using social media. I mean, one is where do we draw the line between our professional and our personal social media use? Friending sources, there's the whole question of particularly on Facebook, which is seen as of a more personal private platform versus Twitter. Is it appropriate to, to friend the spokesperson for the police department? With social media, there is a lot of ethical issues, um, especially when deciding what words to use, what word choice, um, but you have to do it instantaneously. So the main ethical dilemma I face, specifically when I'm doing something live or information has to be distributed immediately, is determining whether or not I'm accurate and if the information is accurately portrayed. I think the speed um, goes really up against traditional value of verification. So you can't have, you, you can't have the time you need to verify information that takes a while and also try to be first on social media. Those are kind of two competing values. Um, and we've seen it, you know, um, over and over again of news outlets who get things wrong because they're trying to beat the competition, be the first to get the information out on social media. Some advantages are you can get it out quickly. But we've seen um, before that getting something out quickly can be troublesome. I think we just give up accuracy for speed. That's, that's the biggest issue. Social media have come to stay. Do we allow them to crop into our mainstream journalism? Yes, with some filtering. But the question is, how do we filter them? So say if something was published in a social media post that wasn't accurate, we would, norm we would never delete it. We would follow up with another tweet saying, co correction, um, this is what actually happened. We wouldn't delete it because it could be, we feel like it's unethical. Your audience, the people out there, are, are more than willing to forgive if you're more than willing to uh, admit that a, a, a mistake was made. Right, so misinformation, particularly when it comes to images on social media, it spreads like wildfire. Um, and I think before particularly journalists hit the retweet or share button, they need to go through that process of verifying, authenticating those photos. And there's a number of things, there are a number of things you can do. We've seen plenty of times, like during hurricanes, I see all the time when uh, there are images of sharks swimming through streets and things like that, which are kind of too hard to believe. So you gotta kind of figure out what the real deal is. We have to do three things. The first one is verify. The second one is verify. And the third one is verify. If we can do that effectively, then we can incorporate things from social media. We can marry social media and journalism. And they make a wonderful couple. But I think there are those particular cases where we have to be careful, particularly in, for example, um, instances of graphic video on online and things like that, of 
should we be sharing this on social media knowing that on social media versus showing it just on a newscast it will it will go viral if it is something that evokes more of an extreme kind of um, extreme uh, sense of emotion in people I think when it comes to social media what's important is that we first place an emphasis not on the tools such as Twitter and mobile devices, but we first place an emphasis on the fundamental journalistic values. If you look at the SPJ Code of Ethics, we have four broad areas of seeking the truth and reporting it, minimizing harm, uh, acting independently, and uh, being transparent. I think the great value of, of social media um, with the audience is our ability to, uh, to some extent, lift the veil on the news gathering process. So. Um, you know, previously, before social media, we used to just worry about our story for the morning newspaper or the evening broadcast. But now stories really take on a life of their own. Um, journalism is really more about a process where we're taking the audience members along on our journey throughout the day and um, showing them, you know, how we're gathering the news, but also giving them um, tidbits of information about that story throughout the day as, as we learn them. So it's more about a process than just a, a kind of an end, end product. When do you make a determination on when it should be used or when it should be used? But when you're in it, you should be using it because it gives you an awesome opportunity to tell your story in real time. I'm, I'm not what one would deem a politically correct person, um, but it's because we're living in a time that's not politically correct. I don't think we can the type of viciousness that we are experiencing in society right now with flowery words and so you have to be direct. It does not matter what your intention is at all. It matters how it will affect other people um, because you can have great intentions but it's not about you. Re like again you're reporting for the people so it matters how the people react. You want to treat people with respect. Uh, you want to um, be kind uh, to those that you encounter even through social media. The reason why I got into journalism, the reason why I hope they're getting into journalism is because their loyalty really should be to the audience. I mean, yes, we're working for a news outlet, but we're really working for the public. Personally, I believe that journalism is a way for people to know the truth. You're not working for anyone but the people. The audience is the people that run the country. And that's where I actually see social media as, um, as an exciting kind of avenue to connect with the audience because it really does present us with new opportunities in ways we didn't have before in terms of building that relationship and ultimately our credibility with the audience.